in Los Angeles at the Roxy. It became that. It became that people would come back and back again. It's like uh, you take somebody like Carol King, who was on Old Records, which Lou Adler was one of the producers of Rocky Horror. Well, Carol King came several times, and, and at the end she started to dress like magenta. I think that was, and and Keith Moon from the Who, the, the drummer who died from the Who, uh, would come, and he got into this thing of there would be if Keith Moon was in the house that particular night. There was nine people in the cast on stage. There would be nine bottles of champagne lined up across the front of the stage. And you go, oh, Keith Moon's here. And, and Elvis Presley came. And uh, I had the most horrible experience once. Uh, Raquel Welch came. And I'm standing in the hallway with no clothes on. And Raquel Welch is coming down the, 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 the hallway. And I was so I, I was so embarrassed that I didn't know what to do. And I, I looked up at her and I said, "Oh, it's Ann Margaret," and which she was not a bit happy about. I can tell you that. And I, I wrote her a letter of apology, and I just explained to her that if if you see Raquel Welch coming down the hallway and you're standing with no clothes on, you tend to like say things and go you know get delusional at that point. And <clears throat> so. There was, you know, a lot of things happened, and you met a lot of people, and, and I remember the, um, my best story of, of, of that from Rocky Horror is um, the movie, and I was really excited, because at that point, I thought I was going to do Eddie and Dr. Scott, the same as in the, uh, in the play, and then I was still excited. They said, well, we're not, we're going to have somebody else do Dr. Scott, and I said, you're making a huge mistake, <laughs> and I, and I, and I. And I still think they did. Even though the actor was fine, I think they made a huge mistake because the, the way it was in the play, Eddie and Dr. Scott really looked alike. And so you knew it was his nephew and they, you know, and, and, and um, I was a very good Dr. Scott. And so the first two weeks when we were doing the play, all we did was the music. We just rehearsed the music. They had not given us a script. And back then, when you got hired to do something, you know, you were making $185, $287 a week. And so it's not like you were getting rich as an actor in New York. You were working and you were paying your rent. But you, at that point in my career, I really didn't say, well, what's the play about? Somebody said, we'll pay you $287. So I'm there, babe. And um, so we're learning the music. And I'm going, well, this music's interesting. And they come to me on the part of uh, Hot Patootie. And Richard O'Brien is here at these rehearsals. And he said to me, uh, I remember this, he says, uh, listen, on this song, because we just got into that song, he said, on this song, don't, you know, you'll never be able to get all the words in. No, nobody, you know, in, in England, two or three people have tried and they can't uh, sing all the words. And he, and he said, I wrote it and I can't sing all the words. And I looked at him, I said, I can sing all the words. And he said, no, there, there, it, it, there's too many to go into the fray. I said, I can sing all the words, and I did, and he, he was blown away from the fact that I was able to do like, a, oh, how does it go, whatever happened to Saturday night, when you dressed up sharp and you felt all right, don't seem the same since cosmic light came into my life, I thought I was divine, I used to go for a ride with a chick could go, and listen to the radio music on, whatever it was, but he could nobody could ever get in and just make those words fly through it, so... So I was able to do that, which was really exciting. And, uh, and I just love telling people, I can do that, and then being able to do it. So anyway, uh, this is a long story. So anyway, so we've been in rehearsal maybe, maybe two weeks, maybe a little less, when they, they tell us that this week Tim Curry's coming, and then the day he's coming in. And so we're all, we, we know he's coming. I think it's on a Wednesday. For some reason, Wednesday comes into my mind at the moment. And we're in this little theater down in Hollywood, a little bitty tiny theater, and rehearsing. And they've actually started to put the beginning of the play on its feet at this point. We still really not, don't have a script other than just like lines for pieces. And, uh, and so we, they said, well, Tim Curry's supposed to come in today. He's supposed to come in today. So we're running the music in order now of how it goes. But we haven't ever heard any of Tim's songs. We've only heard... The songs we're singing, or 
they haven't really presented us with any of these like weird songs yet. And we get to this point in the play where Tim comes in with Sweet Transvestite. And the back doors of this theater open and he comes marching down the aisle in a leather jacket with fishnet stockings and these platform shoes on. And I look at this guy coming down this aisle and he's singing, I'm a sweet transvestite. And I, and I, and I literally get up and walk out of the theater. And I turn to Graham Jarvis going, I'm gone. I'm not doing this. I'm out of here. And he follows me out and he's going, and he's trying to say to me, me, you got to go back. I said, I'm not going back. I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing a play where s some guy's wearing fishnet stockings. W what kind of play is this? And I'm very naive anyway. I don't get sex jokes half the time. So I, I, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. I, we get, and I actually get a ticket for jaywalking. I cross Hollywood Boulevard on a red light, and the cop pulls me over and gives me a ticket for a motorcycle cop. And Graham goes, you got to go back. you got to go back. Now then... The stage manager and Brian Avnet and some other people have come out on the street looking for me, and I'm going, I can't do this. I'm not doing it. They said, look, just come back. We'll understand. Once you see the whole thing, we'll understand if you, if you really can't do it. And I said, no, I can't do this. And then, then I sort of said, well, it is a comedy. It is a musical. I understand it's a parody. Now they've given us a script. I'm able to read it. I'm able to see what it is. Okay, and they've explained to me what I'm doing and how Dr. Scott works and this whole thing. And then I read in the script where Dr. Scott is supposed to wear high heels and fishnet stockings. And I go up to him, I said, uh, uh, look, uh, I'll stay and do the play because I, I think it's funny, but I said, I, I'm drawing the line here. I said, I, I, um, they go, well, it's a really a big part of the play. I said, well, I guess you'll have, I, I can't do it. And they go, well, just... Just bear with, they keep saying, just bear with me, try it, you know. And I'm going, I'm not doing it. So the next thing, you know, I'm being fitted for high heels, <laughs> heel shoes. And now they've given me this garter belt, right? And these fit, and they said, well, just for the dress rehearsal, just try them on. No, I'm not trying them on. They go, just try them on. I'm, and so I've gone this far, so I go, okay, I'll try them on. So at the first preview of this show, I'm like freaking out because I've got these playing Dr. Scott and I've got this blanket on my lap and I got these fishnet stockings and these high heel and this garter belt and this black underwear on and you got to remember that I that I weighed probably about 60 pounds more than I do now and so I go out and part of the thing is this blanket falls off my lap and I bring my leg up like this with this fishnet stocking this high heel and the audience it they that it is, I've never heard such laughter in my entire life. And if you know me and you know my personality, I will always go for the laugh. That's the first thing I'm going for is the laugh, no matter what it is. And when that happened, everybody on stage started, and Tim Curry is the most professional actor that you can, would never break character, would never laugh, would never break his, his thing. He started to laugh. Everybody on stage started laughing. The audience just kept going and kept going, and the laughter would not stop. And I've got my leg up in this shoe, and I'm milking it now. Now I'm really going for it. I'm waving my foot around, and I'm doing. And and from this moment on, I have never in my entire life, and I've seen a lot of comedy, seen an audience laugh that hard. I mean, people were crying and you know how you, you people are in pain from it, and and so. And that happened on several occasions, mostly on Saturday nights, like the second show on a Saturday night when people had a, a bit to drink, would they go complete? And you'd see Tim, not, not all the time, but ever so often, the laughter would just go on so long that Tim would just start to laugh, and everybody would just start to laugh. And, I, and Timmy would ad-lib some stuff at that point, and I can't remember. I'm sorry I don't remember his ad-libs, because they were funny as well. But that's a great moment, so that's the answer to that question. You would... <laughs> Tim was in town doing something, and I met up over at his hotel, and we all wanted to go down to check this out, what we'd been hearing. So we went down there, and it was sold out. And so somebody there, the ticket lady or whatever, said, are, are, are you 